until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the formation at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So, never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times. They keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manner that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The child of God has specifically two responsibilities number one the responsibility of having growing and increasing in the knowledge knowledge of god and who god has made you number two these are the only responsibilities you have as a child of god but then in these two responsibilities are embedded a chain of sub responsibilities <laughs> number two the responsibility of becoming who god has made you i said to you that the child of god has a certain lifetime responsibility i said you have two lifetime responsibilities. Remember? I said you have two lifetime responsibilities. First one I said, it is, of course, you already knew it, so I'm just recapping, I'm doing a recap, all right? I said you, are, you have, um, I said the first responsibility is the responsibility of having, growing, and increasing in the knowledge of God. The knowledge of who God is, of course, I know. And the knowledge of who God has made you. Like he says, grow in grace and in the knowledge. Grow in knowledge. But you see, as much as I may not have the time to 
touch that aspect today again. You have to understand that there are three realms of knowledge. I have told you before. There are three realms of knowledge. So when we say having, growing, and increasing, it refers to every realm of knowledge, not just one realm of knowledge. I said there is the realm of general knowledge. The realm of general knowledge. The realm of general knowledge. That's the knowledge you acquire from reading books, reading the Bible. General knowledge. When you read your Bible, the knowledge you come across is a general knowledge. That's information, as it were. It is the awareness of certain information, general knowledge. And then, and even at that realm, you still have to grow and increase. You know, because we have, we have different levels of general There are those who know better than others, right? So there's, there's the room to grow in that and know in that. So how many books have you read since the beginning of the year? I have not read any book. Others have read more. So they have gained more general knowledge than you are. We talk about the Nigerian uh, political structure. There are those who don't know anything about Nigerian politics. And they want to change the country. <laughs> but we know. Some of us know. So we have read about, we have followed um, certain um, network news to know what's going on. Everywhere in the world, we do that. So that's general knowledge. Some of us have, read, some of us have finished the Bible, while others are yet to even finish a book of the Bible. So uh, some have known more than others. So general knowledge at different levels, right? Because knowledge is always at different levels. Knowledge is always at different levels, categories or degrees of knowledge, degrees of knowledge. So knowledge is always at different levels, at different degrees, different degrees. Hallelujah. You get that? And then there's the second realm of knowledge called the, revel the realm of revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. That's the realm of understanding. Understanding. Because I told you, understanding is a revelation. An inspiration. And remember I told you, revelation is something given, not something acquired. You don't acquire revelation. Revelation is given. I know people read and they understand, they think, oh, I understood it. How did you come about it? There is a spirit in man. He didn't say there's a spirit in Christians. There's a spirit in man. Man is man, meaning mankind, everyone. Then he says, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. So understanding is um, a product or a result of inspiration. You are inspired to understand whether it's the Bible, whether it's a general book. So you are giving and the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. I'm sure you've read that before now, right? Okay, do you want to read on the screen? Can you put it for us? Go ahead, put it. Let's see it. But there's a spirit in man. I'm sure you think this refers to the Holy Spirit. No, it's not referring to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but it's the spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty give, see the almighty does inspire even unbelievers for certain reasons for example um, the, the right brothers you remember the right brothers okay that came up with the whole aeroplane culture uh, we were right you know their dad was a pastor who said it is not possible for metal to fly. I read about their father some days ago. Their father was in the fit life. Man of God in that direction. He said it would take only angels to fly. A few years ago, the Lord inspired his children to make the first <laughs> aircraft. So those guys probably were not even born again. Mark Zuckerberg, all those, Elon Musk and all of that. The things they do are inspiration. The inspiration is not, you can't read a book so much so that you cannot manifest. No. This knowledge of how to make these things, they may not acknowledge God. They may not attribute it to God, but it's of the Lord. It's of the Lord. 
Inspiration comes from God. Archimedes and all of them, they are inspired. The guy that made the fold, an inspiration. God does that for the well-being of his people. They are all this. They are, there is no, if you if you have to just read any book you can and start inventing things. To be an inventor, you've got to be inspired. Inspiration. And they know it. Like the man uh, Albert Einstein always talked about inspiration. That the things he did, they were all inspired. He learned from others, but was inspired to do these things. And then sometimes people learn from what has already been to modify and improve them. But the already been was an inspiration. Architecture, for example. Architecture. When Bezalel and, Han- and Hanoli have made the temple or the, the tabernacle, they were inspired. Subsequent ones were improvements on what they did, but the original was an inspiration. Inspiration. There is no development that's not an inspiration. And inspiration is not something you learn. Inspiration is given. So I was inspired, but they don't attribute it to God. But we know it's God. All things are of God. It takes God to inspire for grace. It says, and the life was the light of man, the development of man. And the development shine in the darkness. The light shine in the darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend it. I'm telling you, these guys are inspired. And they call them genius. And will not give the glory to God. I'll show you something that like later today. Some time ago, a certain guy made a statement about successful people in the world who don't know God and began to say that you really can be anything, you don't have to know God and all of that stuff. And you see, we are surrounded by ideas and information of men that make us think sometimes we are too religious. For example, you eat and say, thank you, Lord. They feel like, what is that? What, is it? what has that got to do with God? You travel down, you land safely and say, Father, thank you. Say, what is that? Even the pilot doesn't know God. And so because they didn't do it and they don't seem to know God, we feel religious. That it's, it's not really everything that is of God, though. There are things unbelievers really don't have to. Because unbelievers do even better sometimes. They don't even know God. And so we think because they don't know God, whatever it is they did was not of God. So the Lord took me for a meeting. This was just a couple of weeks ago. He sat me down, began showing me a very um, critical truth regarding these things that we are surrounded by. And then he said to me, let me give you a couple of examples in the Bible. How many of you remember the king Herod that was very wicked in the Bible? Remember Herod? You remember the time Herod had a feast? Remember Herod? Herod was not a child of God. He was very wicked. He did, he, you know, he destroyed, he killed John the Baptist, remember? Beautiful. And now, the Bible tells us Herod had a feast. And in that feast, Herod gave an, an oratory speech or an oration. And so, he gave an oratory speech, so much so that the people were so inspired and said this can only be the voice of God and not man. The Bible says instantly, worms began to eat because he did not give the glory to God. That means that was of God. That means that inspiration of Herod was of God, even though he didn't give it to God. Because when we give the, when we give the, great, the praise to God, we, they make us feel religious that everything is not God. Yet, God tells us that man who wasn't born again, that which he did was of me. I'll show you that. Let's go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
chapter 12, book of Acts, the apostle. From 22 to 23. 21 to 23, please. 21 to 23, book of Acts, the apostle. Everyone, are you done writing it down? Quickly, let's save time. All right, let's look at it. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. Herod was not a pastor. Herod was not a Christian. So he made an oration. So his oratory speech was so beautiful. He made an oration unto them, the next verse. And the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. Meaning what he said, the oration was too, too deep and inspirational. To be of man. And they say it was of God, not man. That means they said, this can only be a voice of God. That means they called Herod the God and not a man. Look at the next verse. And immediately, the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. Whoa. Had this not happened, they would have said Herod wrote a great book and he wasn't a Christian. Yet God tells us, I was behind that thing Herod did. Are you still here? That's the one example. I'm not done. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a very mighty king. Who didn't know there was a prophecy about his life? Because if you read your Bible carefully, you see that Jeremiah prophesied of him many times. You land there safely. And he said, thank you, Father. I give you prayer. He said, ah. But others are not doing it. So, because they are not doing it, the safety was not of God. It tells us. It tells us from scriptures. That the horse is prepared for the day of battle. But safety is of the Lord. But safety. So, the pilot might have flown that aircraft. But the safety of that aircraft was of the Lord. Those of us who know, we give God the glory. And the unbelievers tell us, but it wasn't God who flew the aircraft. Yet we are told that safety is of the Lord. No, no, I, I, I'm not just trying to debunk anything. What I have decided to do by the Holy Ghost, two things I have. I have set my heart on for this world. Number one, this foolish people must be silenced. Number two, their mouth must be stopped. Give me time, you see it. The Lord told me to do it, and I'm going to do it. They must be silenced and their mouth must be stopped. Crazy wretched fellows. And then you find it, you eat, you want to eat to bless the food. And says, but it's not God that cooked it. How depraved and backward can you be? Is there anything in creation from which we produce a product that's not of God? Tell me what that is. So even the, what about the chemical, whatever they use? Where did the source of chemical come from? All things are of God. Haven't you read that? And so, Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> made this, build this. <sighs> incredible palace beautiful, a piece of engineering work, beautiful palace to behold, something without equal or compare in, his, in, in, the, in the entire end of man. And it was so beautiful. And then he walked one day, what had already come concerning his life, he just didn't know. And then he walked around his temple, admiring the palace, and he said, look at what I have done. See how great a kingdom I have raised. The Bible says immediately the voice fell from heaven and said, give him the heart of a beast. Let seven times pass by him. Let him dwell among animals until he realizes. Until he realizes. That is a God in heaven. But God didn't come to carry pillars when they were building. Yet, all of the success was of God. Let's look at it. Quick. 
quickly. Taking you somewhere. Look up down here. I'm going to try and just. Mm. Oh boy. You know, Danny had told him what would happen. Remember, Danny told him something? He had a dream about a tree whose stump was left in the ground. He didn't know the meaning. And then I told him, and then look at it. Verse, from verse 28. From verse 28, book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 28. I want you guys to read. One, two, read. Just keep going. Next verse. All right, just let that pass. Go to 34. 34, 34. Let me, I'll just read it because I don't know what you're reading. And at the end of the days, I, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me that he didn't own it. At all, sir. It was given to him. Evidently, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. <laughs> I'm trying to bring you to the point where you say, that guy, that actor who said this is a very foolish person. That uh, billionaire is a very foolish person because... The billionaire thought he's acquiring all of, all of these billions by his own intelligence. He tells you the race is not to the suit. Bread is not the man of skin. Look at it. I lifted up, I, I lifted up my eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me. He called him my understanding, but it was not actually he. It was given to him. A man can receive nothing except he be given. And I blessed, watch it, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Let's go to the next verse quickly. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. We're going to come back to this later because this is part of the sovereignty of God. We'll be, coming, we'll be talking about the forms of God. Number one form of God is God is sovereign. We'll get that later. And he doeth according to his will. Watch it carefully. In the army of heaven... And among the inhabitants of the earth, and no can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Next verse. Next verse. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his and ways judgment, and those that walk in pride is able to abase. <laughs> all, whether Christians or not, is able to abase. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Can you give me verse 17 of same chapter? Let's go to 25. If it's, they are similar, but let's do 25 of it. 25, verse 25 of, of this portion. Um, I want you guys to read for me. One, two, read. Have you seen that? Do you know the most high, not the most intelligent. And Elon Musk is not a Christian. Whatever Elon is, God made him. God made him. He may say, I work hard for 16 hours a day. God made him. And the wretched foes you have over here start making us think that Jebusus and all of those who don't know God. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar didn't know God.
Did you read of the king of the Assyrian king who God used him mightily to destroy nations and people and even to punish Israel? But guess what? He became so powerful that he said, I honor my princes like kings and noblemen. And God said, this victory of his and this destruction he has achieved, he has no idea that I used him. It's just that he has always had destruction in his heart. So when he succeeded, he thought he was doing it by his own power. Precious saints, all things are of God. All things. And so we are in the right by giving God the glory. It's not religion. Okay? We are in the right. We are, the, we are not in the wrong. We are doing the right thing by giving God the glory. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Please, I want to appeal to you. Do not take for granted the things I'm telling you. Don't take for granted. Please, do not take them for granted. You know, Moses says it is your life. Solomon said they are life to them to find them. Do not take these things for granted. I'm pleading with you. You need them. They are your life. Your life is, is hinged on them. Jesus said you said the scriptures. Because in them you think we have life. He said, yes, the scriptures point you to me and you will not come to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't take for granted this is I'm telling you. Then I said there's a third realm. So that second level of knowledge, the revelation knowledge, right? That's where you, 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 certain things are revealed to you. You get to know things. And remember I told you that the, the realm of general knowledge is the realm of hope. Where you read your Bible that God healed a woman that was sick of hemorrhage. You read about the man who had um, leprosy and God healed the man. And that gives you hope that God can also do it for you. Where you read about a certain uh, woman called Sarah who was 90 years old and didn't have a child and then looked like God visited and has a child and then you are stirred up with hope. That's the realm of hope. At that level, God hasn't promised you anything. You're only just saying what God did. And so you start hoping that God will do for you. And that's good. But we are not supposed to live by it because the Bible tells us we do not live by hope. We live by faith, right? Then, I said second level is the level of what? Revelation knowledge. At that level, Certain things are given to you by the Spirit of God. Are you getting it? You are gifted. God gives you a revelation. Like Jesus tells us in Matthew 11. Did you ever read that? Matthew 11, 28. Can we have it on the screen if it's possible? Let's quickly check that out. The next verse. Verse before this, 27, please. 27. Okay. Look at it. Everybody, look at your screen. One, two, read. You see that? You don't get to know God just by reading the Bible. He says, Jesus, no man knows the Father except the Son reveals him to you. So, the, the, the revelation knowledge of God is attained to by, 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 by revelation. Or the knowledge of God, that personal knowledge of God is attained to by revelation. It's given. Jesus said, no man knows him except it's given to you, revealed to you, except the Son reveals him to you. So, that brings us to the realm of revelation knowledge. That's the second level. So, and I told you guys that revelation inspires appreciation for the truth. Inspires appreciation for the truth. Understanding, which is a revelation, right? Inspires understanding for the truth. Appreciation for the truth, please. Inspires appreciation for the truth. Understanding, which is a revelation, inspires appreciation for the truth. Understanding, which is a revelation, inspires appreciation for the truth. And that's when it becomes, it becomes personal. That's when you start to appreciate it. Now, the realm of revelation knowledge is the realm of faith. That's where faith is born. That's where faith is born. At that level, you start having that inward conviction 
that what God has said, he is able also to bring to pass. And thus, birth and add it to called trust. Yes, like I was in, in the East, 2012, 19th of August, 2012, and the Lord showed up in a vision and said to me, I have taken away your judgment. I have cast out your enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord is in the midst of it. You shall not see evil anymore. Ooh, that, was not, that was not general knowledge. That was a revelation knowledge. Ooh, you shall not see evil. So right there, faith was born. That inward conviction, he said. Inward conviction. God gave it to me. It's personal. That's it says the just shall live by his faith. So faith is not a general concept. It's a personal thing. Faith is not a general concept. It is a personal thing. The just shall live by his faith. That's what the Bible tells us. Could you show us in Habakkuk 2, 4? If you can find that. Habakkuk 2, and just quick one, verse 4. You guys see it on your screen? What does it say? One to read. You see that? That the just shall live by his faith. And it says, for by faith we stand. For we live by faith and not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. The just shall live by his faith. So when the psalmist said, remember the word unto your servant, for which you've caused me to hope, was talking about a specific visitation. Like I hear, I'm, I'm, I'm there and I hear, Prepare for landing. Specific. It's for me. It's for me. And I have declared it to you guys that you may know that God speaks personal. And so, if anything were to happen to me, but you told him, well, for that's going to happen. That's something I know. It's not possible. So, when I, when I board the aircraft and I'm flying, we're flying across the Atlantic Ocean, I'm not bothered. And even when there's turbulence, I'm not bothered. If I choose to address it, I, if I don't want to address it, I, I just sleep. If I want to sleep, I read through. And then the next thing I hear is, um, ladies and gentlemen, the pilot has announced um, our initial descent into Atlanta. And please fasten your seat, better return to your seats. We're about to begin an initial descent. And you get up, just adjust your seat, press, and sit up. And you're about to say, start putting on your shoes and getting set to get together. And that's it. Not like, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we don't understand what's going on. Please call your loved ones and let them know. No way. Because if that were to happen, it would be, it would be, it would be that I wasn't in that aircraft. Even though I enter. <laughs> it changes the time. So it would be, it would be changed that I wasn't there. Specific. Are you still here? Now, please, let me quickly make something clear. That God told me that doesn't mean I can just jump into the aircraft anyhow. No, because faith must be instructed by wisdom. Yes, that I can't just board any aircraft and just, just board and enter. I must be guided on which airline to fly with, where to travel. With. You can't just say, God has promised me safe flight, so I'm going to enter uh, Uganda air, even when God is not saying to enter. No, because some of us think when, when God has given you a word, you cannot be careless. No. Hallelujah. I say, ah, the last, the last, I, say, I can fly, I can go anywhere in the world. No, no. Even, even the apostle Paul couldn't just go anywhere. Even God, God told him, I will be with you. Hallelujah. Yes. Revelation knowledge, specific. Faith, 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 faith. Specific, faith. And then, that's where, of course, a lot of us are living in that realm. And Christians think if you just read the Bible and you start saying, oh God, I trust to hear me, hear me, and that's faith. And if it doesn't happen, you're angry. You should, you were not told anything. Then you have the third realm, which is the realm of experiential knowledge. Experiential knowledge. It is the realm of trust. That realm, you don't live by revelation, you live by familiarity. <laughs> you, are, you have come to know the Lord in practical terms. You've come to know the Lord in the practical sense of things, you have experienced God many times. You, you now know that this thing is not, it's not, it's not, it doesn't look like God. This, this, this just can, doesn't feel like, this cannot just be God. It's, it's not like God. It's, it's not, it's uncharacteristic of God. It's not the way God talks to me. It's not the way God, I can't, I don't, I doubt this. 
Even though someone is analyzed, say it is no, it's not like it's it's unlike God. No. Let's quickly honor the Lord with our offerings. Lord, we thank you for every opportunity and privilege to offer. And we give with a sense of gratitude, sense of revelation, understanding of what happens when we give. We honor you with our offerings, with our tithes, with our first fruits, with our kingdom commitment, with our best. And Father God, we ask that the anointing of the Spirit rest on what we give. Rest on what we give. Let's not rest on. Let your glory be revealed in all that we give. Yes, it's for a new level, a new plane of life, a plane of greatness, promotion. We give to your praise. Hallelujah. We give to your praise. Hallelujah. We give to your praise. Psalm Alaba saying the Gabahushka. Leon told my breakfast. We will not be the same again after now. Yes, because of what has told us that when we give, it comes back to us in greater measure. We give with great expectation in our hearts and we receive miracles to your praise. The all sufficient life has become our heritage. In Jesus' name. And the church said, yeah. And the good life nation said. When you're born into this world, you are working to the physical realm. As you train your mind and get enlightened, you are mentally awakened. So there's physical awakening, mental awakening. I said that there's a third one, which is the higher, is spiritual awakening. That's when you are awakened to the reality of God, angels, and all. When man comes into this world, he's awakened to the physical world, physical awakening. Then when his mind is trained, he becomes mentally awakened. But he's still dead. Not dead physically, but dead to the reality of God. Because when the scripture talked about death, it refers to what you are insensitive to. What you are not alive to. By virtue of Adam's sin, man died. Not physical death, spiritually. By spiritual death, it means we're cut off from the life of God and we became unresponsive to the realities of God. When the life came, we were awakened. Not physically awakened, not mentally awakened. We were awakened spiritually. We were awakened to the realities of angels of God and the spiritual realm. Suddenly, man knows that God is a reality. God is true. God is no longer just an idea. The light makes God real in your heart. The awakening that that light brought is called light. You can have the life that receives the glow of God right now. And suddenly, you find that the things you once called foolishness are actually realities, are great verities. So what do I do to have that life? What do I do to give God a room in my life? Become his child. How do I become the child of God? It is by declaring this word of prayer with me right now. Say after me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification today I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior I ask for the remission of sins of my soul I ask for eternal life of my spirit and by faith I receive the remission of sins my soul I receive eternal life of my spirit and I declare I am born again I declare the life of God is coming to my spirit I declare I now belong in the family of God and so I ask you father go and repeat after me come and place your mark of ownership on me by 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in the spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. So how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. Ibragina Sakradi Mere Dose Frokitaba Rabashi Kabela Endo Cobra Irakata Labroko Rabakashi Beredidi Poso Freke Dele Manda Krista Rabababa Bokosu in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the spirit of dominion, the spirit of lordship, by the Holy Ghost, I trample and crush to pieces this day all my worries, all my cares, all my sorrows, all my, sorrow. all my troubles, all my, troubles. All, my all my limitations. I declare, I declare where, these are bounded, where these are bounded, grace, grace did, much more did much more abound. By the abundance of your grace, abundance of your grace I rule over them from today, from today they, shall no they shall no longer have dominion, have dominion over, me, over me. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, subdue them. I subdue them. I rule over them. Rule over them. For, as For as it is written, the Egyptians, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them. No more. no more. I declare, I declare these, challenges, these challenges, these worries, these, these cares, these, these troubles that I see today in the name of Jesus, I shall see them no more. No more. Speak in other tongues. Go ahead. You have dominion over them by the Holy Ghost. Dominion over sin, dominion over poverty, dominion over fear, dominion over lack, dominion over anxiety, dominion over suicidal thought, dominion over same sex desires, dominion over fornication, dominion over immorality, dominion over infertility, dominion, dominion by the Holy Ghost, Lava Ponte, Lake Bosante, Luba Haya, Luba Haya. Monto Kobo Shaha, Lee Havana Minto Kobo, Hira Basa de Manto, Hira Boko Toboto, Ipa Yatata, Tones of Emmy Dio, Tones of Emmy Dio, You have a heart, You have a heart, Ziva Cambregizo, Rene Prate, Paris and the Game and Rigo, Broke up recovery, Salamine. If I die, I saw me on the Gaba. Julie Apodeza. 
Jube gamina misi fori pataka Zofia tida Zofia tiza pelo som fudima Skopri osku vino Liga prikis devo minda gristi Vri azomindo opro kabisa Zaki da ifro koto grisa la mantri Biza fatana, biza fatana Kure konje ego pela Loto patagahi Zai pakanino eva kata Adabro koko Alaki pandrima Alaki bohodoko Adibo separatis Kura baba We have the rule over there Bless me God Who has given us the victory By the victory of Christ I decree We crush the pieces We have the rule We have the dominion We have the rule The influence The authority The power Over these limitations Over these troubles These challenges We look for them We find them no more By the Holy Ghost Through the abundance of grace We subdue them In the name of Jesus Hallelujah In the name of Jesus I would advise you to hold a triumphant amen when I say that. In the name of Jesus. Oh, this is giving reality to expectations, to hard desires. So say after me, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask and I receive, I possess, I have ownership of these desires, of these expectations, why it is called today, by the Holy Ghost, I declare, I declare as, it written, as it is written, all things, all things are, yours. are yours. Therefore, Therefore I, take I take ownership of these, of these, of these. Of these. Today, Today, I declare, Today, I declare these, expectations these expectations have become, have become my, reality. my reality in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Speak another tongue. So to. The lazy baby at the re and the grass of a Maliko profes the ice gummet. Brother Pila and Madalo Oscovrido. You repent the best if a dabbing a deal. Jabalai the pepona, mean the glassila. Billy a pono, mean to. A dive the base, the base of Bopo Tata. Pitani Mestupo Pepe Deco. Lutis Avis Dabba and the Meha. The tag of the mini the tag of Lord Ramin the Pelego, Lama City of the Pono, in the Mingo of the Lee of the Dab, Old Jamie of the Tail, Mock of the Dab of the Spear, Zero of the Yapto, Moss of the Red Grassy, Lock of Pepe D as a Pondo Oma, Mr. Father Grab the Lock of the Zara in the Pondo Mora here. Don't salida, don't salida from the grave. Do the palapis, do the palapis. No to break the devil, 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 the Ali, you repent the crack, you recrack the pot, you repent, for Jebedee, Buzikata, Budiketo, Bilegro Focha, Beronto, Zuzaha, Bide Fire, Bide Cor, Dubrico, Zubrico, Rondo Boshi, Dulikata, Duze, Duliko, Yuri Denga, Bilizifo, Juzi Patrick Nome, Dubri Dega, Rondo Dina for Dramo, Boko Dia, Dubra, Dubra, Longa Pedisato, Pitanja, Pita Pisa, Longa Pado, Dobro Kibia, Nobri Casato, Dobro Dina, Conde Dabi, Sepelis Obrecano, Lopi Paras Des, Nego Briti Gabi, Longa Son, Pitanja, Pitanja, Longa Dabo, Pita, Pita, Shuki Tondo, Pedisa, Nobri Paras, Dubri Ta, Nobri Ta, Really, 
Look in the name of Jesus.